join me. We're so excited to have them back from Madagascar. Yep. Come on. That is amazing. God is faithful, isn't he not? Oh my goodness. Um, I was just thinking, I like our church. I like you guys. You make the church. And I was just thinking, all, I was looking around at all the different personalities and gifts, and I was like, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. You guys are amazing. You really are. And uh, whenever somebody's not here, it's always kind of like different because you're missing a part of your body. And so um, I love our community. I love what God's doing in each and every one of your lives. And so I just like to watch him. I like to watch him grow you and mature you. And I love just looking around sometimes and just going, wow, I remember when. Oh, yeah, I remember them when. <laughs> and uh, I get to watch God transform you. And I look at, well, some were just, yep. <laughs> I can say that because she's my daughter. <laughs> but I remember when. <clears throat> and uh, you guys um, came at the basement and... Um, how much you've grown as a daughter and son of mine and just um, also friends. You guys are amazing. Um, the maturity level that you have in the Lord and how you've chosen to surrender your life and uh, the importance of covenant to you. And I think that covenant is what really has um, sealed your maturity in Christ because you knew what it meant to put down roots and to storm the weather. And um, it's not always this, when the sun is shining, it's um, being able to stay when the, when the storms are, are raging and um, you still stay together and you ride the waves. And um, that's what we've done. And then, of course, Miriam and Jason came along right after. And uh, Miriam, you were actually in the basement a few times. And uh, then we met at um, Mosaic Church on Schaefer. And um, God spoke to me and said, they're going to come be a part of leadership at the well. And I said, oh, how is that going to happen? Because he's a youth pastor at a Lutheran church. So I thought I should tell him. And um, I didn't because the Lord's the one that spoke it. So I just waited. And um, God, is, uh, God is so faithful. And he brought him and um, they began to have conversation with me and I got to marry them, and uh, it's just been a beautiful journey. Ah, I'm so blessed. Um, so first question I have for you guys is, um, I know for all four of you, this is the first time you were actually blessed and sent to go out on a mission field. Um, what was that like? How was that different? Uh, greatest difference for me being sent uh, last time or the first time Miriam and I ever went on a mission trip together was to Africa a few years ago and at that time just to experience me personally experienced the spiritual warfare was absolutely oppressive um, won't get into details but difference then versus now is I was expecting there to be some crazy spiritual warfare but was completely covered and I knew that the demonic realm was doing war against us uh, right from the beginning. I just had the knowledge, but there was zero fear attached. Uh, at one point, did have a dream where there was an encounter, and I just looked at uh, the image that was encountering me, and I said, I know your purpose is to bring fear, but I need to sleep, so will you please just go away? <laughs> and... The image disappeared and fell asleep soundly and didn't wake up again the rest of the night. Yeah, I would say the same um, when we went to Africa before. Um, there's just a lot of witchcraft and we found ourselves constantly praying for each other and like taking turns trying to support each other. Like so some people could sleep, some people had to stay awake. 
And pretty much every night we all, apart from jet lag, slept great, didn't have any issues. Um, none of us got sick on the trip, like not even like bathroom issues. <laughs> I mean, none of us got sick at all, um, <laughs> which is a huge deal. It's a distraction. And um, on top of that, too, I think leaving, like there was such a hunger and anticipation from all of you. Um, and just a lot of excitement to send us. And so I remember when we left just feeling like, wow, like we were accountable to a lot of people. A lot of people are involved in this. A lot of people are partnering. And I just feel really supported and that people believe in this. So it was very different in that way. Yeah, it just felt like a huge honor to go like sent out from, from all of you and knowing that we weren't just going like for our own heart to go, but there was a lot of hearts behind it, um, yeah. behind what we were doing, and that just felt amazing. And and yeah, there was just a huge grace on all of us. We, like, just even with the four of us with unity, we never had to sit down and work through nope. um, any issues or offenses. And um, we all had our moments of being cranky, but just, it was really free to be like, hey, I'm, I'm having a moment right now, guys. And there was just a lot of openness and, um, unity for all of us, which was amazing. That's really good. Um, <clears throat> I've never been on a trip like this born again. I've been overseas before I was saved. So I don't, I don't know what it's like to go born again and not sent. It's like this is our only experience, which is really nice. But I would say that the difference traveling now versus before was how um, little sympathy I felt there with like in the in the negative sense of I you almost have this expectation of you're going to go and and see like really hard stuff and see a lot of need and brokenness and and there are things that were present but it was more of like oh we're actually here because we have something to offer and they will get into it I think as we keep talking but there was no like um, grieving in it it was just we're a loved family sent by loving family to go to a loving family and love and like <laughs> just do a bunch of love stuff. It was really, it was really simple and really fun. So I, I mainly what I felt was a lot of what Thea was shared, just the honor from everybody that, that gave, that prayed, that encouraged, whatever. We felt that the whole time we were there, like never felt alone at all. Um, so that was really beautiful and fun. Okay, what is a focal point that you experienced while you were there? So like, what's the one thing that you felt like really stuck out to, to you um, while you were with Melanie and the kids? I guess I have, I have something to say. <laughs> Um, I'll, I don't know how to pick one. I'll start with, um, I think this is probably the best one for me to share. The first morning we were there, I woke up and was very aware of the attitude that I brought to the trip, which was I'm going to Africa and Africa is where miracles happen. Africa, that kind of thing. And I had this massive like push to have an experience, honestly, that I didn't know I had until I woke up the first morning. Um, so for me personally, one of the processes, the, just talking with the Lord through the trip was how simple love is and how I'm still processing, honestly, so the language isn't there on how to communicate it, I don't think yet, but when you're there to offer your life, it doesn't really matter what you see or don't see. And thankfully, God was faithful and we got to see stuff. There were experiences and encounters that were wonderful and glorious, but there's such a small part of the package for me on my trip. And then even seeing how Melanie loves her family and how they minister, how they do life, it's not an experience thereafter. It's not an encounter. It's genuine, simple love. And God is there and God does stuff. And it's, it's just so, so simple, way more simple than I ever knew it, it to be. So I hope I figure out how to say that better down the road. But. 
Um, something that I noticed right away, kind of similar to the not having sympathy, sympathy piece that Max shared was even just in hours of being there, just just kind of being overcome with how beautiful their life is yeah. and not feeling like, a, like I've never been to a third world country before myself, but I've heard a lot of stories and I feel like the mindset is like, oh, I wish we could bring these kids back here so they can have a good life kind of mentality, but their life is amazing. So Just good. felt overwhelmed with like, their life is beautiful. It's so valuable. Um, Iris, the team and the kids, they're totally living in kingdom yeah. and living in family and freedom. And we were all just blown away by, by their lives and the freedom they live in. So yeah. just felt like such an honor and a value um, for them. Um, and to add to that too, like a lot of those um, kids have been taken out of rough situations or abuse or, you know, just things that we don't even imagine here. Um, a lot of them have experienced stuff like that. And like, it didn't seem like any of them needed like a sozo session or like inner healing or just lots of time. Um, like they were all functioning really well together. They, they shared better than, I mean, most children I've seen. They didn't fight with each other. They settled accounts. Um, so it was just cool to see like um, all of these kids operating in a kingdom culture like what Theo was saying. Um, and the leadership also with just enjoying like the elements of their culture as well, but totally operating on a kingdom level. And I've never seen that. We've visited a lot of different orphanages and stuff like that. And usually you see a lot of poverty mentality and like it was not there at all. Yeah. Yeah, biggest takeaway uh, to see what it looks like to see a 145 child kingdom family operating in health. Um, it would it'd be impossible for Mary and I to offer any of these kids a better life than what they already have. Uh, exactly what Max said, to see family operating in loving family, uh, these children. When we opened up these suitcases of toys at each house, they had five houses, uh, opened up a suitcase at each house. There was not a poverty mindset amongst any of them. There was not a mindset of entitlement. There was a mindset of dad's in the house. I'm going to get myself a popsicle when dad gives me the popsicle. I don't have to worry about it. This item is not for Taryn Telly. This item is for myself to share with Taryn Telly. I know that if he gets it first, he and I are going to play together with it. It's not a problem at all. Um, so everybody just waited patiently to be given something to play with or something that was their own. Set, their own. Um, so and just how Melanie was so passionate or is so passionate about the hearts of each child, even to the point where she gets this righteous anger when somebody says, I really want to adopt this child. She's like, you're not going to take my daughter from me, <laughs> okay? So I don't go into your house and say, I'm going to take your child and give them a better life. She's like, it is impossible for you to give that child, love that child any more than the 20 moms and dads this person already has. Yeah, give him a hand clap. That's amazing. Um, <clears throat> having the teaching gift that I have, I want to take a moment. <laughs> because um, something was just said, and I actually been having a discussion with somebody, is that love is simple, and yet it's complicated at the same time. There's the tension. Is that it's easy to say to you, you love, but loving isn't always easy. And um, so I'm looking at like 1 Corinthians 13, and it says, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long, it's kind, it does not envy, it does not parade itself, and it's not puffed up. Now, that's not always easy if you're operating out of the flesh instead of out of the spirit. Love is not... Is, it suffers long. How many of you like to be long-suffering? Raise your hand. Oh, I love it. It's been my life is to be long-suffering. Thank you for the precious gift of the Holy Spirit. Um, but that's love. That's love. And so love is simple, and yet it's hard. It's hard if you're, not, if you're having to love in your own strength. It's easy when you get to love out of his strength. And I think that it's just so amazing. I would love to read this word for word, but some of it was kind of personal. Katie gave me. I just read it, and it's exactly what God broke off. I mean, it was crazy. Um, uh, you know, that 
that independent, want to hold on to control of my life. And, and that's exactly what you saw in the spirit. And God did it throughout worship. And don't pick that robe back up, you know. Hang on to the love of the Holy Spirit. It says, love does not behave rudely. It does not seek its own. It is not provoked. And it thinks no evil. It does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things. It believes all things. It hopes all things. And it adores all things. Love never fails. And that is a powerful force. And in some ways, it's so simple. In some ways, it's so hard. If love could really, if we could operate out of this kind of love, we would transform this society. We would transform this nation and we would transform the world because we wouldn't try to convince people to think like we do. We would, you know what I'm saying? That's what real love does. Real love empowers people. Real love accepts people for where they're at, hoping that they will someday know who Jesus Christ is. All right, off my soapbox. But it's true, right? Um, oh, so we're talking about what was the one thing that you remember most. But I know whenever I've gone on a mission trip, I'm the one that usually <laughs> leaves with the most. I feel like I came to give, and I leave the most transformed and changed. And so would you guys want to be personal with us and share what God did in you and is doing in you? <laughs> hey. Uh, I'm the only one that doesn't have any issues, so. <clears throat> um, yeah, the, the miracle thing was a big one for me. Um, honestly, seeing the, this family, like what I, I would say for me, I never wanted to stay there was one thing I feel like is important to say. I love what God is doing here. And I'm... We're, we're right where we're supposed to be. And we, it feels like we just did, our family, we just got like inherited another family that I, we're gonna do life with, like for sure. They're, I don't want more of that. <laughs> like I'm good in like two places or whatever, but um, it's so simple. I, I wish it, I had more language for it. That's what he did in me. It's so simple. It is so easy to just love Jesus, believe the gospel, and then interact with human beings and hold a kid's hand, whatever. It doesn't matter what it is, like how we do life here. You just honor people. You just simply see them the way that God sees them and you'll change the world. I was grateful for Melanie's willingness to open up that they have so many... Um, transformation stories. And, and thankfully we walked in seven years down the road. So we got to see a lot of transformation testimonies that have already happened. We met them, we looked them in the eyes. We saw kids that, you know, were literally saved out of street gutters, walk around with no shame, no insecurity, looking in the eyes. They know who they are. Like, so we saw that, but we also got to see testimonies that haven't happened yet. Um, while we were there, I'll share with you one of the, um, Tuntelli is the guy that Melanie personally out of her own pocket put up money to help this guy start a small business that allowed him to keep his kids instead of giving his kids to the center. And it's changed their, the economy for their family and now they get to keep their kids. But while we were there, one of, we found out his 13 year old son has been missing for two months. Um, they don't know where he is, which is not, it's a really big deal. And so I left, I left that afternoon like emotionally toasted. I was just done. I have no grid for how you deal with that. You're helpless, there's no police, you don't like, it's just not here, it's different. And uh, so I left thinking, Jesus, you really have to be enough. Like he really has to be enough there. Just like he really has to be enough here. And um, for me learning, and I, I hope to keep that revelation that he really is enough for everything we're called to in Kentwood. It's the same gospel. It's not different, it's not more important there or here, like Jesus is Jesus and his love is enough for everybody. And um, so my own, one of the questions you sent us was, what's one word? 
mine is unimportant. <laughs> I'm, I became, and I'm trying to be more convinced of just really how unimportant I personally am. Like I'm, <laughs> you just don't know you think you're like a big deal until you realize you think you're a big deal. And I'm just not a big deal. <laughs> I'm really unimportant. And the things that I get to see in life are gifts from God. The, the relationships he's given me are gifts from God. The covenant family, it's gifts from God. It's, anyway, I don't know how else to say it, so. Um, I can add to that inspirational story <laughs> by my own revelation. Um, so I think one of the things, I'm still processing too, but I think one of the things that I presumed for Melanie was that she was probably really tired She's been there for a while. She hasn't been home in probably about a year. So she was, I assumed she was going to be burnt out or just needing encouragement. And when we've gone to visit people before, that's how it's been. And so we like went in with this presumption of we're going to bring refreshing to you and stuff like that. And probably after the first night of just catching up and conversing and the next morning of doing some service stuff, um, I had the revelation of, wow, like, I'm really not needed here. And I'm like, <laughs> like, how do I bring this message back to all those people that were really excited to send us? You know, like, I'm not needed. And then Max shared, wow, I feel really unimportant. And we're like, wow, we, <laughs> we have a great encouraging story. But, um, but it was true. Like, you know, I mean, what I thought I was bringing was, it wasn't needed specifically for Melanie. Other people did benefit from it, which was awesome. It was the kindness of the Lord. Um, but I feel like God kind of changed, like, he, he, real, he helped me to realize, like, my agenda was not the same as his agenda. And he had other things in store for us. And actually, like Max said it a, a few times when we were there, like, this whole trip is just a gift from the Father to us. Like, you know, we're not needed in the ways that we thought we were, but we're still here. We're putting our hands to the, to the plow, so to speak, and that there's a blessing that he has for us in it. And there's a gift that he has in us for it, so... Um, and it's true, it was, it was such a gift to be able to just partner with what Melanie's doing and just take part in, like, just the awesome kingdom culture that we saw, so. Not needed. <laughs> but in a, in a n again, like what Max shared, not in a, um, like, shameful or, like, um, I don't know, a bad way, like in a, I get to participate. I don't have to. Like, this is God's gift to me to participate in something that he's doing in a different country. So, um, I feel like this trip for me is going to be something that I get to look back onto for years to come of like a, an experience and a reminder of not having to strive or like live out of works. Um, I definitely had moments leading up to it of like, I don't feel spiritual enough to do something like this. Or, um, but it really felt like the whole time we were there, like we were just there being family with each other and with Melanie and just really enjoying each other. And God just opened a door to be family to the kids and to the team. And um, he just really did the rest. Like we just got to be there and be ourselves. And we... Um, after we left, Melanie sent us a message. Um, the, the director there, his name is Julio, said to her after we left that it felt like family that had been there for five years just left. Wow. Um, and we, yeah, we, we really did get to do so much. Um, but I think a few days into it, we all were chatting like, we don't feel like we're working enough. Like, more should be happening or like we should be trying harder. But um, in the end, like, God just really did so much. We got to pray and minister to their whole leadership team, which is not something they normally let people do. Um, but there was just a real open door for us to be family to them and got to minister to a specific couple that really did need refreshing. And, um, yeah, just God did a lot in the end. But we just got to be us and, and love on everyone. I appreciate the wording of the question, that it's present and future tense. What is God doing? Um, you know, a trip like this, I thought I knew what I was getting myself into, going into it. And right from the beginning, um, God was doing something very different. Where typically, um, I have been deeply impacted by the atmosphere I'm around and by the team that I'm with. Um, but God really was able to just clothe me in something different 
um, and right from the beginning, even though there was a lot of opportunities for us to be frustrated um, as far as unplanned expenses, uh, when we had our layover, like, I mean, $500 worth of unexpected expenses immediately right off the bat. Um, at no point did, um, so I was protected from being frustrated at all. And I was getting, starting to be like, God, is it okay for me to not be frustrated? Because I feel like I'm supposed to be frustrated about this. <laughs> and we're able to talk about it later on after we got into Madagascar. And um, I was feeling disconnected from the team. Um, so I chatted with Max and he said, you know what, I was, I was noticing that. So I asked the Lord about it and God said, it's okay, I'm doing something in him. So you just need to leave him be. And it was 30 seconds um, before that I was like, okay, God, I'm getting frustrated because I'm feeling disconnected. Max asked me, Jason, how are you doing? I'm like, well, this is how I'm feeling. And he shared that with me. If God told me that you're okay, I'm like, thank you, God, that I'm okay. <laughs> I was getting worried that I'm not okay. <clears throat> um, so really something that I'm just realizing uh, from this morning, this morning during worship is that it is God's kindness to withhold revelation of what he's doing in the moment. Um, yeah, somebody write that down. <laughs> it is totally God's kindness that he withholds his revelation of what he's doing in the moment. And when you, because what it does is it really reveals God's glory and keeps us very much God focused in each moment. So that way God can bring about to completion of the work that he's doing in that moment. And it keeps me from getting in the way of what God's doing. So I'm looking at some of the pictures that you guys sent. Um, do we have any pictures to put up there? Oh, that would have been a great idea. Oh, too bad. Anyway, I'm looking at some of the pictures that they sent. <laughs> and so what I see here is just like a lot of love. You're holding children. Um, I don't know, Jason, many of you know this, but... He loves to cook. He's like Mr. Chef. And um, so it's always fun to go to his house. I mean, he literally will put on a chef coat. I'm not kidding. And put the towel over his, over his shoulder. I mean, it's hilarious. Um, so he just has his own little mini, you know, world there. And here he is serving um, up this meal to all these children. And I'm guessing other people as well. But he's got the towel over his shoulder, and he's, he's doing it to excellence as though he was at home. And you can tell he's putting all the little finishing touches on each leg dish. You know how you, you, know, you put a little, little parsley on top or something like that? So he's got presentation, and the color looks nice as well. Um, but to, so it's just, it's just fun to see that they were actually just really pouring out love. So you said that you got an opportunity to pray with the leadership team, and that was one of the things I prayed for is that you guys were going to be able to pray with them and minister to them. and Because, oh, you know, they, whether they realize they need it or not, they need it. And whether they realize that they need refreshing or not, they need it. We all do. And um, I believe that you guys brought that in more ways than what you realize. It's not, sometimes we think that the power of God is seeing somebody fall on the floor. And oftentimes the power of God is just your presence amongst them and loving them um, through their life. And that's what you guys did. You brought, I believe, the culture that we have here to them. And that's why they just felt like, you know, hey, you're family. Because yeah. if you're new here, hopefully you've already been greeted at least 10 times um, because we just love people. And um, that's because God loves people. Yeah, and I want to know what else you guys did because I know you did painting and things like that. I just want to testify to how we've been raised in family here through, through you, honestly, Pastor Kathy. Um, they were rocked by that ministry time we had with them. And honestly, for us, it was so simple. It's like very much what we're used to and accustomed to. We, we got invited into worship. They have like a weekly team meeting where they worship and then go over stuff, talk about stuff they got to talk about. And they don't usually let visitors in, but they invited us in to worship with them. And, um, and they did it in English, some at like 50-50, which was cool. And then, uh, cause then we can sing along. <laughs> and, uh, but anyways, we just started prophesying and praying and, and just the stuff, you know, doing the stuff. And we got a bunch of like, what I, we didn't realize in the moment, real accurate words, personal words for them about 
seasons that they're each in personally. And um, they came up separately probably two or three times, Julio and Patty. Pa- Ju- Julio is the husband, Patty's the wife, who reminds me a lot of you there. She's like the mom of the house with this massive government thing on her, which is really cool. Um, but they came up probably two or three times and just said, thank you, thank you, thank you. They're very used to teams coming in for an experience. Like they're, they're there to like see Africa or see a love at an orphanage. Or, you know what I'm talking about? Like that weird thing. And they come to, they actually come to take is what they're used to. So it was rare for them to experience a team that genuinely just came to, we're just here to give, like whatever that means, whatever that looks like, we just want to help and serve and yeah. So the culture of here, it, it honestly felt like gears in an engine where we just fit with what they're doing because that's their heart for their kids. Um, so that was really cool. Mm-hmm. Share about what we did. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So <laughs> um, we spent a lot of time playing with kids, yes. playing basketball and soccer, and Some I watched basketball. them do that. I did. <laughs> yes, Max and Jason. Jason. Um, Jason cooked breakfast, lunch, and dinner for us and Melanie every single day. We feasted. It was awesome. (laughs) Um, And we, well, Jason got to make a big feast for Melanie's small group, which was about 12 young girls. So we all ate dinner with them one night and got to hang out with them. And then we had another dinner that Jason cooked with Patty and Julio. (laughs) Miriam and I chopped for him. Um, for another dinner for Patio and Julio and the five oldest boys um, at the, the home. We got to have dinner with them, and um, we did a lot of painting. We They have a big, like, great room where they have school and church that we painted, and then three of the boys' bedrooms we painted. Yep. Um. On the last day while the guys were painting, Thea and I got to hang out with the kids' community program um, where the kids aren't actually living in the center, but the center is helping the families keep the kids in the home by providing food for them while they're um, learning how to do sustainable living things. Like um, each each family has something different that they're working towards to make a living. Um, So we got to hand out rice and beans to um, all of the families that were involved in that um, project after the doctor gave a lecture on like different types of health and um, just education about health practices. So that was really cool to sit in on. And then um, we got to visit Tintilly, who was like, I think Max was sharing earlier, um, one of the micro projects that Melanie um, helped set up in the beginning. And so we got to visit his shop and buy some items from his shop and pray with him. And um, one of the other things we got to do too was, um, we got to visit, yeah, we, we got to go to um, the garbage dump where Iris, school, um, Iris Ministries built a school for them, and we got to see their school and then visit some of the families. Um, we saw one of the houses that the kids came out of, and we actually tried to meet his mom, but he, she was out um, doing some work or something. And then um, we spent some time with one of the connections that Melanie had met from the garbage dump and got to be invited into her home. Um, pray for her home, pray for her family, which was really cool. Hmm? Yeah. Um, really quick on the kids' community program, something that I am really impressed by Iris Ministries, and we heard from Melanie, is that their focus, first and foremost, if a child comes to comes to them, they first will try to replace that child back into their home. They will not just take any child from family. They're not interested in that. So their goal first is to bring the child back to their home. And if there is a challenge so the family can't afford them, then what they'll do is enter them into the kids' community program. Uh, They will do what they did for Tantilly, which is give them sustainable living. So this is a way that they partner with the community to um, really make the whole community very much kingdom, um, which yeah, just is so, so wonderful. Um, so something else that we're able to do is uh, give Melanie experience that she hasn't been able to experience yet. Um, pulled her out of the city. We went like an hour and a half drive or so outside of the city and went to uh, Lemur Park. Um, 
so just this uh, preserve uh, where they have lemurs and other things. I really wish I would have sent pictures to Steve so he could put them up. But Miriam literally got about 12 inches from the face of a lemur who was just like staring at her like this. And then he became very disinterested in her presence and went like this. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was super cool. Uh, Melanie was really ministered to um, by that experience just to get out and spend some family time um, and experiencing some new things and seeing some new things. Um, we also had some time just to talk with Melanie about how she's creating a new program for sewing for a lot of the moms, um, which I think maybe you should talk a little bit more about. Okay. Um, so for in the kids community program, they want to train people to so that they can have sustainable work. Um, they'll send them to mechanic school or other things like that or do the micro loans. And then one thing that Melanie's starting right now is she's got f three or four moms on the team right now is she hired someone to come and teach them how to sew. Wow. And they're going to start making like little kids dresses and shirts with matching bears and booties and cute stuff like that, headbands that they hope to figure out how to ship over here and sell in stores over here. Um, so... It, it's in just the beginning stages, but we're really excited to um, be a connection for her in uh, figuring out how to, how to help that grow. Um, and they already, they pay the women to come and learn how to sew and they can bring their babies with them. And um, it's just a really awesome, like honoring environment for the women to work in already. Um, yeah, it's so exciting. So I spoke with Melanie on Friday and I said, so how did it go? And she just kept saying, cool. It was so cool. It was so cool. She's like, I wish I had a better word. She goes, all I can think of is cool. And I said, how about that moped? And um, she, what was her reaction when you gave her the moped? Speechless? Speechless? Cried? She has been asked to be one of the leaders. Um, the main leader is leaving or has left. Um, she just left and will be gone for, I think, a year, two years year and a half. And so she um, has asked to step into, I don't know if it's necessarily her position, but into a leadership role where she has to go to a lot of different places. And she would have had to have done that all on foot. And so just the timing of God, your, your right. generosity in giving to be able to provide her with a moped to be able to do the things that she needs to do and do it more efficiently. So that's a big deal. So give God a hand clap for the timing with that. And one of the things that she said to me on the phone um, if for a prayer need is that not that they don't like people to come for short-term mission trips. Um, that's, that's fine, she said, but really that's not what they're looking for. They really need some people who feel called to come there and make that their home. You know, much like what she did, it was like, this isn't, I'm not here for six months to check it out and to see if it'll work, but they need other people who are willing to lay down their life and say, this is where I'm called to and partner with them in what, um, what God is asking them to do. So if you'd be praying for that, that God would just move on the hearts of people to come and help them. They have like 120 children or some. Oh, it's, it keeps going up, 145 children. And um, they don't call them orphans, they're their children. And uh, so it's not an orphanage. They come in and they become part of their home and part of their family. It's such a beautiful picture of what Iris has created. And um, it really is duplica duplicable. Yep, that's my word. And um, so that's what they're doing. They're duplicating it. And uh, so we have some pictures in just a moment, maybe. I, I sent them some pictures so that you guys could see. Um, there we go. I didn't make that. <laughs> Isn't that go awesome? Back that go back picture. to that, yeah. So that is a normal quantity for the child. So, yeah. So that, that bowl is larger than your normal bowl, okay? Um, and the food is absolutely phenomenal. And every, really every child um, gets that quantity for, I think, three meals a day 
or two meals a day are huge, breakfast is a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller. Um, but they're not going hungry at all. Um, and something that Melanie shared with us too is that when visitors come in because the children are family, children will always have preference. She said, I will never feed you over my children. Just so you guys know, you'll go hungry and I will go hungry, but my children will never go hungry. Cool. Isn't that awesome? So next one. Aw. Are these a couple of the guys that you guys play basketball with? And look, she has a well mug. <laughs> I love that. She used all week. She loved it. That's painting. And where is this at? Is that the air airport? Oh, Brian. Yeah. So that is Brian. Brian is his name. Um, he's only been there for a couple of months, right? Um, and he has burns all over 80% um, of his body. Um, but you would never know that he was ever impacted. His spirit is super bright. He is the uh, picky, picky honest. He picked on us the entire week. Um, and he would like come up out of nowhere, pinch you on the back, and then take off just laughing hysterically. <laughs> Just an awesome kid, totally our buddy. He refused to say goodbye when we were leaving. Yeah, just an awesome, awesome kid. And yeah, those two brothers just got there two, and two months before we arrived as well and are fully, uh, very quickly integrated into the culture of I am loved and I am provided for. You can keep going. Yeah, Orlando, he is somebody, he and his brother are living there as well. He's the younger of the two. Um, his dad, uh, they were one of the, I think, garbage dumps. Um, yeah, garbage dump family. He and his brother want so badly to live with their dad. Their dad uh, went to jail for a while because he was stealing food to provide for his kids. Uh, mom disappeared from the picture um, but his dad, they're working to uh, restore Orlando and his brother to live with their dad again. Um, but right now, they're able to meet someplace, um, but he's, their dad is not allowed to know where they are living, uh, just court order. So that's an area for all of you to be in prayer for, um, that their dad is able to um, really just uh, find sustainable work so he doesn't have to steal anymore. Um, and he's actually rebuilding their house as well. Um, just has plastic and garbage for the roof and the walls. Um, but just something for them to be restored to them as well. Mika. Mika. And that's Sanda. What does her name mean? Worthy. Worthy. Um, she just arrived um, not long ago either. Um, and she is just the... She has the brightest spirit, the most beautiful spirit you've ever seen. Yeah, that's right. Um, and then they have five boys. That's Patty and Julio, the directors. And they're two, they have two daughters, kind of, it's hard to see right now, but the little girl standing up on the right are Nancy and Stacy. And then the five oldest boys were some of the first boys to come seven years ago, and now they're all almost 18-ish. Um, so that's one thing they're trying to figure out is how do we keep extending this family as kids are getting older. Their oldest, one of their oldest sons just got married and moved out with his wife, and so they're just figuring out, like, how do you graduate full-blown sons into their own life? Yeah. yeah, and the married son is back. Like, he's still there hanging out, still doing family, works with them. Uh, one of their, their, their dreams in life are... He wants a um, uh, th third son up on the right has an odd name that's really hard for me to remember. Fanamazansu. Fanamazansu. He wants. He says his dream is to be like Julio when he grows up. He wants to start a center uh, in another part of Madagascar and do family with Jesus. Uh, across from him was Nicola, who is currently a professional soccer player. Um, down next to Thea's Tantelli, uh, he has a real gentle spirit. I can't remember what he said he wants to do, but all I remember about him was he got, 
He wants to be a policeman. He got, which makes sense, he got beat with a stick pretty maliciously like the day before we got there. They put him in the hospital. It was, it was really, they thought he might have brain damage and stuff. Um, but watching him just walk with, in mercy, like he, they get the kingdom. It's, they just live in the kingdom. So um, Fifi is in the white hat. Uh, I don't remember. What's his dream? No. Missionary, I think. And then Maurice is closest in the blue hat looking away. He wants to preach the gospel. So, yeah, they're awesome. Yeah, Maurice uh, currently is the worship leader for their Sunday services. And he has been bringing different music in, and we got to experience one of the first Sundays where he introduced three different songs. Um, and just the presence of God during their worship service is powerful, absolutely powerful. Cook they cook on, they like charcoal, yes. charcoal, charcoal brick things, and they cook on those outside. Most of their kitchens are outside because it's just hot, so that makes sense. It's also like fire safety. That's uh, Gaio, and that's Caden's helicopter that Jason and Miriam bought Caden a while back, and then Caden want. He said, "I want to give it to the friends," so he sent a bunch of his toys, and yeah. Uh, that's a bunch of the stuff that you and everybody gave on the table in front of us. That's their med clinic where they store all their medicine. Uh, Rena is on my left, or my on the left in the picture. She's their nurse. Um, Gia, the white girl on the right, is another like full-time missionary there that she, she and Melanie live together. Uh, Sabidi is the woman holding a baby in front. I think she does their worship. Or their money, oh, the baby. baby house. Yeah, you guys, they freaked when we gave them the stuff. Like all the donations and money and stuff we used to buy, they were like blown away. Yeah, they had to go get more shelves. They had too much stuff. So. All right. Wow. That was amazing. Thank you for um, helping to send them because uh, even though you weren't physically there, we were all really a part of what it is that um, they received. And, you know, it's, it's interesting because I really feel like um, they don't even know yet everything that they've received from you guys being there. Um, but also I know what you guys have received and what you're going to bring back here as well. Um, love is number one. Love wins all the time, right? And uh, so really, I think the theme of this, I know our, our series is the Send series, and, and uh, last week really kind of launched that, I, I feel like, is like, you know, God said, teach them to go. And um, you don't have to go to Madagascar to share the gospel and share the kingdom with the people that are around you. Um, God, God wants to use you where you're at, in your workplace, in your neighborhood, with your family. And it should start at home, honestly. It has to start at home. And then when you have a healthy home, you can, you can pour out into the people that are around you. And, and I really want to encourage you that as we continue with this Send series, that you guys are, are going out and, and really just displaying the goodness of God. Um, it can happen if, you know, sometimes I feel like we're just waiting for the person next to us to do it. And it's all of our personal responsibility. It's our personal responsibility. We left here on Sunday. We went to the Olive Garden, and our um, waiter wound up being so incredibly blessed. We actually wound up praying for him, prophesying over him, and he cried and, and, and wept. And we really believe that um, we're going to continue to sow seeds into his life. And um, he got one of the, probably one of the biggest tips he's ever received since he's been working as a waiter. And um, he had mentioned something about he had broken his eyeglasses. And I said, well, we know a father who can help provide for those eyeglasses. And you know what he did? He used us to do that. 
We didn't just pray and say, oh, God, could you just restore his eyeglasses to him? And, you know, we did that. We helped to pay for those eyeglasses. And uh, that's kingdom. And um, he, he just left so impacted, didn't he? I mean, I was over there crying. I mean, it was a, um, I was a mess. Everybody's, like, trying to hold it together. And, and uh, what are we doing? We're just bringing love. And um, I just encourage you to do that. You know, and waiters and waitresses, it's so easy because they can't go anywhere. <laughs> they got to listen to you. And so, I mean, I'm just saying, I mean, that is one way. Um, but just, do you know your neighbor? <laughs> he knows me, but do you know your neighbor? I remember one day I went for a walk and I'm like, I do not know my neighbors. That's not good. I have to know my neighbors. Do you know your neighbors? Do they know you? Do they know who you are? Would they be comfortable knocking on your door asking you for sugar? I mean, remember those days? But now we've become so closed off. We have one neighbor. He doesn't care. He just plows right across the street, whips open the door and says, hey, can I get some sugar? I'm like, hi, Ben. (laughs) And he'll see this. He loves that. He loves to be a neighbor, a real neighbor. And, uh, you know, be a neighbor. Can, I, can that be our challenge? Let's, let's, let's that be our challenge. Let's connect with one of our neighbors that we have not yet connected with. And let them see the love of Jesus through you. I'm not saying you have to just all automatically, you know, preach the gospel to them. Just be love. Just be love. That will happen. Amen? All right. Well, Father, we thank you for this time together. You're an amazing daddy. You always provide more than enough, and you did when they went to Madagascar. I thank you for the testimony of your goodness, for the testimony of your love and of family. And God, may we be challenged today as we, as we leave here to, to get to know one of our neighbors that we don't yet know and to be able to be um, a light in a dark world. And so God, thank you for sending us into the world. Thank you for empowering us to go into the world. In Jesus' name, amen.